Hi everyone, and thanks for taking time out of your day to review with me the new performance series, Thermal Optical Deep in View Network Cameras from Hike Vision. As you can see, there are three different models of this camera, and later on in this presentation, I'll be showing you some images actually captured from this camera, and I'll be using the turret model for those demonstrations. During this presentation, we're going to cover the different models and SKUs, pricing, key specifications, key selling points, a little refresher on thermal video, some unique features of these new cameras, your target customers and applications, and of course a demonstration of the camera's actual performance. So let's take a little deeper dive into some of the camera's specifications. As we've seen already, there are three different models, but there are actually seven different SKUs. For the bi-spectrum thermal optical models, we'll start with the turret camera, it has three different lens options for the thermal imager, a two millimeter, three millimeter, or six millimeter variant. For the bullet camera, we offer it to you in both a three millimeter and six millimeter variant. And for the thermal only bullet, also three millimeter and six millimeter. In all cases, those cameras with the bi-spectrum option, the optical lens, will very closely match the thermal lens, but won't be exactly the same size. Refer to the data sheet for specifics. For the third year in a row, Hike Vision won the 2019 ESX Innovation Award, and our thermal optical deep in view turret camera was chosen for that award, recognizing its innovation and excellence in the industry. Pricing is always a question. In this case, we're talking about very affordable pricing. In fact, for the thermal optical models, both the bullet and the turret carry the same MSRP, and the thermal only version is even lower in cost. When we look at key specifications, I'm going to focus on the bispectrum thermal optical models. They both use a 17 microbolometer thermal sensor. We provide you with nominal detection ranges, minimum illumination for the optical, an NETD of less than 40 millikelvin, which is extremely good for an uncooled thermal camera. Our standard VCA package including intrusion, line crossing, region entrance, and region exiting, with a maximum of eight total rules. H.265 plus video compression. Ingress protection IP66 or IP67, depending on the model. And of course, these cameras have recently been released in North America. Some key selling points that we'll focus on during this presentation include short range perimeter detection, temperature measurement, smoking detection, and predictive maintenance. For your customer, the return on investment is super low cost with a fully featured camera and a thermal optical array combined with deep in view technology. So what makes this camera special? Having a thermal camera for detection and an optical camera for identification is a feature that any customer can utilize. Picture in picture or image overlay fusion. You have a choice between these two different options and we'll take a look at them later to see how they work. The deep in view technology with a full suite of the deep in view VCAs with human and vehicle filtering, temperature exception monitoring, early warning fire prevention, fire detection, and cigarette smoking detection. The part number and description give a very detailed explanation of each of the camera's capabilities, what it supports, the type of streaming that it provides, and the different lens options and the part numbers. Sometimes your customer might ask, well, why do I need a thermal camera, let alone a bi-spectrum camera? So you're going to need to point out some of the advantages of thermal cameras over optical cameras and how they can work complementary to each other. In this example, we're showcasing the feature where thermal cameras are not affected by visible light. So whether it be bright flashing lights or just bright lights or backlit scenes or even complete darkness, you can see the detection capability of the thermal imager is far superior in this case to the optical imagers on the left side. You might not even notice the gentleman walking down the hill in the top right image unless somebody pointed it out to you. But it's clear and it's distinct and you can easily see it but completely lost in the visible image. 
Another advantage of thermal cameras is that they're only slightly affected by weather or atmospheric conditions such as fog, rain, and snow. As you can see as we fill this room up with fog, the visible image is completely obscured, yet the thermal image is virtually crystal clear. Another advantage of thermal cameras you can point out is how effective they are at detecting a person in hidden areas or dark areas or landscaping, wooded areas, etc., which are typically obscured to the optical camera, but allow easy detection of an individual on the thermal side. We're going to cover just a few more items regarding the specifications and special features of this camera before we get into an actual demonstration. Each of the data sheets for each of the different models contains a range performance chart. The top part of the chart shows us our distances for detection, recognition, and identification of human or vehicle based on the Johnson criteria. The lower part of the chart is our smart functions range table. So our smart functions like line crossing, intrusion, region entrance, and region exit optimize to the Johnson criteria for recognition, as well as our temperature exception and advanced fire detection. When it comes to temperature measurement and fire prevention, keep your eyes on the right side of the screen and watch for the bounding box to turn yellow for a warning and red for an alarm. The whole purpose of these features, temperature measurement and fire prevention, is so that we can quickly locate an alarm condition, receive some sort of alarm notification. We can accurately set where we want to check for high temperatures with flexible rule settings such as points, lines, or areas. And we can do this real time, 24 hours a day. Applications for this range across a myriad of installations, whether it's a warehouse, museum, data center, manufacturing, retail store, office building. It really doesn't matter. This could be used virtually anywhere. One of the camera's smart features is smoking detection. The chart at the bottom shows you the distances based on the thermal lens focal length, whether it's a 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, or 6 millimeter lens, shows you our thermal field of view and the distance from which we can detect smoking. Great applications for this in commercial hospitality, entrance to a hotel where there's not supposed to be smoking, maybe around a pool area where there's a no smoking area. Obviously, gas and petroleum would be a great application for this, especially for people smoking at a gas pump around campuses or other locations where there are no smoking areas as well. Another very cool feature of this camera is image fusion. Bispectrum image fusion provides more image details by taking the optical and the thermal camera, adding them together, and what we get as a result is image fusion, which includes all the thermal characteristics and outlines and details from the optical camera. It's sort of the best of both worlds. Now if you choose not to use image fusion, you can choose then to use picture in picture. So it's a choice between the two picture in picture or image fusion. The advantage of picture in picture is the ability to monitor using only one video channel. This might save you some bandwidth if you really need to do so. And there's no need to switch between the thermal channel and the optical channel. You can see both of them at the same time. It's simply an inset of one picture within the other, and you can change the inset location. Putting all the specifications and details and features to the side, let's go ahead and focus on some real-world applications where you have a chance to sell this camera as a solution. Some of the areas that you might look at are any customer that has a fleet of vehicles that are parked overnight. And air conditioning repair company or a home warranty service company, anyone in the trades. Also customers that stockpile product in an outdoor yard just because they don't have the indoor space to do it or it doesn't make sense to store the items indoors. Small warehouses or docks with roll-up doors. Roll-up doors are a great choice for thieves to break into because they're typically easy. Auto repair shops where customer vehicles are left outside at nighttime when their business is closed. Boat and RV storage lots where people are paying a price to keep their favorite toys safe and secure. And there's many, many more. Simply using a mapping program, you can go and pick out certain industrial areas within a city or county that you're working on and locate these type of businesses just by sort of looking from a bird's eye view and seeing those structures and facilities that make the most sense and put them on your target list as new sales. 
One great opportunity that I've always come across is the granite countertop business. Now, not this little storefront that just sells the service, but the company that actually stockpiles the granite. Most of them store the granite outdoors, and hey, let's face it, for most thieves, a four or 500 pound slab of granite is not something that's easily taken. But these items do get stolen, and they do get stolen often, and their vehicles are always targeted because of the special tools that they keep inside. So take a look for some of these things and think about how you could sell a short range perimeter protection solution to them. But when it comes to short range perimeter protection, there's a few things that you have to keep in mind. Let's take a look at this facility. We have a main building and behind the main building, we have a service vehicle parking area or an area that's fenced in with chain link fence. And on one end, we have a gate. There's certainly many different ways to tackle this, but from a pure perimeter protection standpoint, line crossing, is going to be your VCA of choice in most cases. So we'll start out by placing our first camera, camera number one, and it's looking down our fence line. One thing you have to keep in mind is that under the camera, there's gonna be a blind spot. So how do you cover up that blind spot? Well, you're gonna need another camera. So we'll go ahead and place our camera number four, looking down the building line, but covering the blind spot underneath camera number one. We install camera number three to cover the eastern perimeter along with the gate. But camera number three has a blind spot as well. So now we add camera number two, which looks down the entire southern line of the fence and covers up the blind spot under camera three. So each camera is covering the other camera's blind spot. And in this case, line crossing will probably be your VCA of choice because it will provide you with the best detection and the least amount of false alarms. So let me show you how this camera can actually work in what we'll call a staged real world application. In this case, I'm using the turret model with a three millimeter variant on the thermal lens. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a VCA rule for a line crossing down the fence line. But as you see currently in the image, there is no fence line. So I'm gonna use some smoke and mirrors to make this look a little bit more realistic to you. And we'll go ahead and add a fence line for a storage yard for some large cranes. These large cranes have big spools of copper on them and people are always coming in and stealing the copper. I'm also gonna use IVMS 4200 so that we can do live monitoring and get an actual alarm when the VCA is triggered. So in this case, if we had local monitoring, we would have received an immediate alarm notification. And if we don't have local monitoring, we can use the other resources available to set up some sort of action to provide us with a notification, be it a text message, email, notification through the mobile app, or something else. In this next section, I wanna show you the range performance of the thermal imager. Remember, I'm using the turret model with the three millimeter variant lens. According to the range performance chart, 298 feet for detection, 75 feet for recognition, and 36 feet for identification. I'm gonna start off at 100 feet and move 25 feet closer. And you can see that each time as I pass through the line crossing in either direction, the VCA is triggered and alert is created. Now we'll go ahead and review some of the basic VCAs. We'll start off with region entrance. As soon as I cross into the region, I'm immediately detected and the VCA is triggered. Next one we're gonna look at is intrusion. It's sort of the same thing, but I can have a built-in delay. So I enter the region, and once I'm in the region for the time that I've defined, then the VCA is triggered. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and go with region exiting. So in this case, I can enter the region and I can move around within the region and everything is fine. I've been detected, but the VCA has not been triggered at this point. And only upon exiting the region will the VCA be triggered. And using that trigger, I can then create whatever action I want to have. Now we'll take a look at smoking detection a very cool feature. 
but it's also time to bring up an important point about this camera. If you want to use the standard VCA package, you will not have access to the fire detection features. And if you want to use the fire detection features, you won't have access to the basic VCA package. So it is a choice. You have to choose between the VCA resource type. Now you can see that I'm logged into the camera and under system, I'm going to go to the maintenance section. Under maintenance, we have the VCA resource type tab. And here I have two choices, temperature measurement and behavior analysis or temperature measurement and fire detection. We're currently in the temperature measurement and behavior analysis. And that I know because I have a VCA tab and I can set up my different VCA rules, etc. But let's see what happens when we go to this tab and we choose temperature measurement and fire detection. First of all, it's gonna require a reboot of the camera. So after the reboot, you can now see that I am set for temperature measurement and fire detection. I no longer have a VCA section in my navigation tree. And if I go to events and smart events, I now have the dynamic fire source detection and I can choose between the dynamic fire mode or the smoking detection mode. So let's take a look at a real world application for the smoking detection. In this case, we have the camera temporarily installed at a gas station. The vehicle pulls up to the gas pump and the individual inside decides that it's time to step out and light up a cigarette. This person shall remain unnamed. In any case, step out of the vehicle, pull out a cigarette, light it up, and within just a few seconds, the smoking detection analytic is going to identify this behavior by basically looking for a concentration of heat in a small area. That's just the basics of the analytics without diving too deep into it. But you can see we received that alarm. And since we're using IVMS 4200, we can switch over to a dual view where we see both the optical and the thermal camera at the same time. The thermal camera is doing the detection. The optical camera is going to allow us to identify who the perpetrator actually is. Another nice feature of using this within IVMS 4200 is the ability to search through the different events, which I'll show you in just a minute. But here's the individual again, walks up from behind the vehicle, is already smoking. And within just a few seconds, the analytic detects that and sounds the alarm. Now we're gonna switch over to the event center and look at our event list and choose one of these alerts that's already occurred we're going to see a snapshot from both the optical and thermal cameras, and we can also play the video from the thermal camera so that we can see the incident as it occurred. And if you notice in the snapshot, it shows us when the detection actually took place with the red bounding box around the source of the detection. We'll change the angle a little bit now, shooting from the side. I'm standing in front of the vehicle, pull out a cigarette, and go ahead and light it up. And once again, we have our smoking detection. So for a quick review, let's remember we have three different models and seven different SKUs of our thermal optical deep in view network cameras. And what makes them special? Thermal for detection, optical for identification, picture in picture or image overlay fusion. Deep in view technology with a full suite of our deep in view VCAs with human and vehicle filtering, temperature exception, early warning fire prevention, fire detection, and cigarette smoking detection, all at an extremely affordable price.